everyone, welcome back to my floor. The time has come yet again for me to put on my business hat. If you hearken back to several videos ago, I had done a review from a product that I received for free. It was the Mia watercolor set, and uh, I really enjoyed use of that watercolor set, but the same agent that asked me to do that review has also asked me to review a set of Hemi paintbrushes. Because I'm not even really sure what I'm gonna do yet, I just kinda wanna go through the product details with you. And uh, first of all, if you're interested in purchasing these brushes, the description is in, uh, the link. I said that backwards. The link is in the description. <laughs> so if you want to get a set of these brushes for yourself, you can do so on the Amazon link that I will provide for all of you. And just a disclaimer that I chose the green brushes. Now I think two of the sets of brushes, two of the colors you can choose from include flat brushes, and then two sets include round brushes. And I got one of the sets that had the round brushes because that was something that I thought that I wanted. And it's green, so it actually matches my set of Hemi uh, jelly gouache, right? Yeah, the jelly gouache. <laughs> Same color, so I'm color coordinated. So this is the box that it came in. It's just slides right open and it comes sort of like in a bed of straw funny choice but okay and uh, <laughs> you can see that the brushes are huge like um, there's a couple of smaller I would say more average sized brushes and that probably includes these two you've got a number five and a number six here and I've got a nine a ten and a twelve the twelve is honker and they're all round brushes these are the ones that I got so I'm interested to see how they perform and I'm probably going to do some tests with it in my sketchbook to see how much water they hold in the bristles and then after that I'm going to do a painting with them and I'll probably do a portrait but I do want to see how these puppies stand up to the kind of watercolor performance that I need them to Excuse me, sir. Now, just because these items have been given to me for free does not mean I'm going to be kind. I might be kind, you never know. So far, I've been very pleased with all of the Mia slash Hemi products that I have received. I really love the gouache paints, the watercolors perform really well, so you never know. I could be very surprised by these brushes. What I will say is that the um, handle of these feels little bit hollow. I can't tell if it is or if it's just a very lightweight plastic. They're not quite as, like, let me grab a different paintbrush here. Like, this brush, it also has a plastic handle, right? And it's painted. It just feels a lot more solid, whereas these seem a little bit more top-heavy than a brush like this does. And I think it's because the inside of these are hollow. I don't know. I don't know what that means. I don't know if it makes a bit of difference at all. <laughs> it could mean nothing. And we just have some hollow handled paintbrushes. All right, the time has come. Let's do the thing. Wow. <laughs> I'll try not to destroy them before we have a chance to use them, but I just want to give a closer examination of what these brushes are actually like. They just look very ordinary to me, and um, that's fine. And they're also sealed with a kind of glue, which I think is supposed to be to keep the shape of the bristles. Because they're round brushes and they come to a very fine point at the end, I think that to prevent them from getting damaged in transport, they have, in addition to these kind of like plastic tubes over the tips, a layer of some kind of fixative that will keep the, uh, the shape of the brushes. And I would say that's really standard, not something that I'm unused to, especially with watercolors. And oh my gosh, how do I keep these? I'm rolling all over the place. They're just trying to get away from me. Oop, this one came with some bristles. Oh, what a shame. I think I remember this happening when I got the Mia watercolors too. And it went away when I got the brush wet. So you can actually form them back into place, but if it becomes too much of a problem, I'm gonna have to snip them off. Okay. We've got some late afternoon sunshine streaking across my desk right now, and it looks very dramatic. Hopefully it won't prevent you from seeing what I'm doing because this part isn't really about creating a piece of art. It's more about testing to see how much water these brushes can hold. 
okay so we got some water over here and then for the sake of posterity i will be using the mia watercolor set gotta keep it within the brand you know what i mean for consistency's sake but we are we're going to see just exactly how much water each of these brushes can hold so i'm just gonna jump right in I'm just gonna pick a color Oop. oh pixel sorry pixel knocked the charging cord of my phone here a little bit and that moved my camera but hopefully you guys can still see what I'm doing so we are starting with the smallest brush which is the number five and I'm just doing some lines and we're gonna try to get like nice thin strands here and these are very likely synthetic hair brushes I can't imagine that they'd be anything else now it doesn't seem as if the brush holds a lot of water before it runs dry but that's of course because this is the number five brush so i can't say that i'm surprised let's move on to the second brush this is the number six this was the one that had the bristles sort of like sticking out to the side you could probably see them yeah you can see them there on camera and once again just starting thin moving a thick not the best, not the worst. I have to say that like the smaller brushes weren't the reason why I was interested in buying this set because I was given the option, you know, you don't have to do these reviews, you don't have to receive these products. But when I saw how big some of the other brushes were, of course I was intrigued because, you know, they just get kind of ginormous and who wouldn't want large brushes to do large washes? That's what I have an interest in for some of my types of painting, so. Let me break the seal on this glue here. There we go. Yeah, I can't say that I'm super impressed with these so far. I mean, not that I think that they're unusable. I mean, a brush is a brush. But in terms of like holding water, they don't perform as well as like a competitor of some synthetic hair brushes. These work pretty much exactly like the other synthetic hair brushes that I use. They are performing pretty well though when it comes to like very thin details, like thin lines like that. Yeah, like even for this large brush, which is not the largest in the set, but it's the number nine. So it's like the medium size out of what I've received in this package. It is doing okay for like fine details. And yeah, it just runs out of water. In terms of like how I feel about them, they, they you know, they're up to par for, <laughs> for the kind of brushes that I expected them to be. They haven't blown my mind, but I'm not yet disappointed. So the next brush that I'm using now is the number 10. I've got some blue paint on here. And once again, trying to get those light lines in there and then lots like, woo, yeah, nice big bold juicy strokes. And the larger brushes are definitely performing a little bit better in terms of water content than the smaller brushes, which again is to be expected. But I mean, this one, this is the big boy. This is the number 12 and probably the one that I was the most excited to work with. So, oh God, look at how thin that line is. That's so cool. Oh yeah. Yeah, this is definitely nice and juicy. It's holding a lot more water than the previous brushes. That's that's what more like it. That's what I wanted to see out of these brushes, especially the big brushes. I wanted to see brushes that could hold a lot of water, that could apply large washes of color. Oh yeah, see I haven't re-dipped this brush at all and I'm running out of room on this paper. Oh, it's finally starting to run out, but it's nice to have one of these in my collection in this size because I haven't had one yet. So even if like these aren't the most impressive uh, watercolor brushes in the world. I'm still glad I own them now <laughs> because it was something that I needed. We're just gonna keep swiping until we completely run out of full juice here. All right, uh, well, at any rate, I think it's still a little bit wet, but I've kind of run out of pigment. So I think that the number 12 has performed pretty well now. The boring part is over. I'm going to put my sketchbook away. Oh, by the way, if you guys are wondering why there's a large black square here, no spoilers, but this is for a future video. So try to imagine in your mind what I could possibly do be doing on a black surface in a watercolor sketchbook. It's a mystery. <laughs> So let me put this aside and I'm going to go grab a piece of paper from my sample pack from my friend Maria and we are going to do a portrait. All right, I have returned. 
So I pulled out from my sample pack of paper, this is the 100% cotton piece of Daler and Rowney cold press paper that my friend Maria gave to me. If you guys aren't up to speed, I have received a pack of different kinds of watercolor paper from different brands, um, all from my friend Maria, and I'll put a link up into the cards if you haven't seen me rattling all of them off and praising her and discussing some of the things that I've learned about watercolor paper over the months that I've worked with watercolor. It's been very important to me that I learn these things, and Maria provided a very large sample of different kinds of paper for me to test out. So this is the one that I'm using today, Daler and Rowney, and we are going to do a portrait. I pulled up, if you can see, there she is, this picture right here, which I thought had a lot of very decent amounts of light and shadow, and uh, a very, you know, attractive person here with their face sort of like pointing down, nice profile. So I am going to sketch this in really quick and then we can get to painting and see how well the paint brushes hold up. Okay, as you can see, I kind of left a little bit too much negative space up at the top. This is something that I have a problem with. <laughs> when it comes to centering my portraits, especially if I'm drawing um, directly from a reference picture. Sometimes I have a hard time orienting where the final drawing will end up on the sheet of paper or the canvas, whatever it is. And uh, that's just something that I need to work on a little bit in the future, I think. But I am interested. Let me make some adjustments to this picture. I like bumping up the contrast in these pictures. Oh, I forgot the brush behind her ear. Let me draw that in real quick, because I do actually kind of like that about this picture that she's got a paintbrush tucked behind her ear. I mean, like, how perfect is that? We are reviewing paintbrushes today, so, I mean, it, naturally, I feel like it should be in this picture, right? But I do like to bump up the contrast of my reference picture sometimes. I think that gives me a better idea of the final values that I'm looking for in a painting because I have a tendency to kind of like, when I paint things, they end up not being quite as deep or as dark, or if they do, it's fine. But like, if they don't end up with as deep of values as they originally had in the reference picture, at least it doesn't look super washed out. Art hack. <laughs> If that's something that you struggle with and you're drawing from reference, just bump up the contrast. And it'll also give you a better idea of like where certain planes of the face are if you're doing portraits. Let's just erase some of the more extraneous lines. Definitely want to clean up the shoulder down here. So the first thing that I intend to do with this painting is do the background. And this will give us a good idea of how much water this large 12 brush can hold. And I like doing wet on wet for my backgrounds and I'm pretty sure because this is 100% cotton paper that it will hold up and stay damp enough long enough for me to put my background color down. And I am, I'm a fan of uh, doing my backgrounds before I do the actual like foreground image. In this case, it's a portrait, but I do feel like it can be easier to like kind of clean up your edges a little bit. All right, let's dive in. I am such a fan already with this, I, this is the largest brush in this set, right? This is the number 12. And when I went around the tip of this paintbrush here, got a nice fine point, could go around it pretty well. Um, I was maybe a little uh, sloppy around here down by the area of the chin. In fact, I kind of missed a spot right here. Yeah, there we go. Um, but it comes to a very fine point on the end. So even this huge brush, can get tiny little details if you need it to. That bodes well, because the reason I got this set, I can't remember if I mentioned it yet, but I got the round brushes because portraiture is my bread and butter. You know what I mean? And you have so many intricate little details of the face that you have to get into. If you don't have a fine tip brush, that's not really achievable. So while things like flat brushes can be useful for some things, I find round brushes the ones that I turn to the most when I'm doing portraits. So this set was, I believe, the most relevant for me in my specific art practice in watercolor. I still plan to do things like landscapes and what have you, but considering that this is always the subject that I turn to, 
So that concludes the number 12 brush. Let's move on to the number 10 brush and get some of the sort of larger areas of like the hair and the skin and stuff like that. So here goes nothing. making mistakes cuz I'm impatient somebody stop me self-sabotaging with my patience yeah yeah do you like my song <laughs> that's my song <laughs> I've made a few mistakes because that is, uh, that's just, that's just how I roll. Um, I like, uh, rushing through watercolor paintings. Somebody smack me. It's okay. I don't think it's anything that I can't fix at some point. So, um, at this point it was just laying down large blocks of color in the hair on the skin. I forgot her ear until the very last minute, which is why there's like this nice big line there now nuts. <laughs> but for the most part, I don't think that there's anything wrong with what I've done so far. I do want to get this to dry before I work on other layers, so I'm going to take a little break and come back. Okay, I went pee, I made tea, and now I'm back and I'm using now the number nine brush, which is slightly smaller than the number 10 that we were just using. And I'm going to dilute some of this color that I put in her hair here. Actually, let me brighten it up with a little bit of blue. Gosh, I love the thin lines that you can get with these brushes. How well they will stand to the test of time is another story entirely and not something that I can answer in this video because I've just opened the box. However, since I don't plan on getting rid of them or anything, I expect that you're going to hear from me again regarding these brushes once I've had them in my collection for long enough that I feel that I can give an updated review after we've gotten to know each other and done a few paintings together. But the thin lines, guys, that's satisfying as hell. Oh my god. Oh my god. As for the Daler and Rowney paper, I mean, it's okay. I mean, so far I, I haven't had too much of an issue with it. I'm also being incredibly fast and loose with this painting, but that doesn't mean I'm trying to rush. Nice thick brows. I got thick brows too. I'm going to move back to working on some of this person's body. All right, it's time to head now to the number six brush. I'm just gonna ignore these sort of bristles that are sticking off to the side here. I do want to go back in and add some more color to the areas of the lips that I didn't add. And then there are some details there that we're gonna wanna add in later. And then also the other eyebrow that's over there. Start adding in some of these eyelashes. Oh no, I didn't realize that this part was still wet. Oh no. And then we're also going to add some shadow over here to this ear. And then deepening up the shadows on the bridge of the nose over here. So this is where things get kind of tricky because I always think they look wrong until I'm done and I'm like, oh wait, <laughs> that doesn't look wrong at all. It's that I just haven't gotten my shadows deep enough, especially like in the corner of the eye over here. I'm definitely gonna need like cooler tones sort of right there and then above the eye. This is something that I'm learning about watercolor is that like you can overdo it. Whereas I'm used to like acrylic paint where if you make a mistake, you can just cover it up. That's not as easily achieved with watercolor. You do kind of have to have a little bit of faith when you're working on stuff like this. While it can seem daunting, if you give up before you're done, you're just going to end up looking at your artwork and thinking that it looks wrong when it's really just not finished yet. That's actually looking pretty good. I'm actually gonna try to use some of this white watercolor. Shout out to all the watercolor purists who hate white. I'll never stop thinking about you every time I do this. 
So I am fast running out of daylight, which means Wah! I gotta do one of these numbers. <laughs> I hope you're okay with that. It might be a very abrupt change. And then the final bit that I have to do is coloring in this paintbrush. This looks pretty good. So I guess it kind of goes without saying that I am pretty overall impressed with the brushes. Oh, and I realized that I don't think I did anything with this small number five brush. So let me just, uh, while I, oh, I just hit my table with my knee, sorry. Um, while I sort of go over the smaller details with this little number five brush, I'll give you my final impressions of this set of brushes that I got from Himi. They are, I would say, fairly decent synthetic brushes. I don't think there's anything really groundbreaking about them, <laughs> but I do think that they perform well, well enough. I don't recall them being very expensive, although these were sent to me for free. I did look them up after I received them to see what the retail value is, but I can't remember it off the top of my head. I'll post it on screen, and of course the link for the product will be in the description if you wish to purchase these brushes yourself. So yeah, overall, I think that these are fine. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I don't think there's anything that I can say more about them that won't be entirely redundant. Can you get better brushes out there? Of course you can. And I suggest that you always hunt around for the best option for you. These were sent to me for free in exchange change for a review. This review is what you're getting today. The larger brushes are large enough, I think, that they hold enough water to do a lot of work and put down a pretty decent pigment load in one go. Definitely not the best that I have seen. Um, and, you know, I'm talking of reviews that I have seen secondhand because I don't own any natural hair brushes, which of course everybody is trying to emulate the performance of natural hair brushes in terms of like how much paint and how much water they can actually hold before you have to refill your brush. It's a bar we have set as watercolor artists. Again, nothing groundbreaking, but that doesn't mean that they're useless. I think they actually work out pretty dang good. So here she is. Here's my lovely lady with a paintbrush in her hair. And thanks again to my friend Maria for providing me watercolor paper for me to experiment with. Uh, Dale and Rowney gets six out of 10, maybe seven, six and a half. <laughs> I hope that's good enough. It seems to apply okay, but again, a lot of this has to do with me and the way that I apply paint and the fact that I may have been rushing a little bit. Actually, before I let you go, I think I am going to change the color of the background just a tad. It's still obviously gonna have blue, but I think I might try to make it a little bit more green. It can be kind of like rough too. I'm not trying to be like super perfect about this this week. I think it's okay to every once in a while just play around and see what you get just by being a little like messy. All done. What up fam? <laughs> I'm in a silly mood today and I have no idea why. I've had a very, very stressful week. Oh my goodness. Um, if you know me in my personal life, you know that on more than one occasion this week, I have wanted to wring out my hair. <sighs> I'm not gonna get into it. But let me just say that my mood has improved today and that I'm happy to be with all of you. I think I find therapy in getting to record my art process and just sit down and do some very low pressure art. Absolutely no need to be a perfectionist tonight. This is all about enjoyment. So with that, I hope you have enjoyed. I have enjoyed. If you end up checking out these brushes and you wanna share your results with me, you're welcome to leave them in the comments down below. I'm here, love to chat, love to talk art supplies, so. Please do let me know what you think of them. I wish you all a very lovely weekend. I will see you next week. Until I see you again. Ciao, everybody. <laughs>